Santi. So today, in our spiritual chakra journey, we have reached to chakra number six. I believe everyone who attended each and every workshop, they must have uh, did some work to realize the strength and the weaknesses of each chakra so far we learned. So from the previous chakra, throat chakra, the Vishuddha chakra, the last three chakras are the spiritual chakras. And when these chakras are activated or in balance energy, the person or the individual is spiritually awakened. So let's begin today's um, practice with sitting in silence for a few moments. I will share a slide with the symbol. Of Agya Chakra. Agya Chakra. We will learn more details about it in a few minutes. Just gaze at this beautiful image for a few moments. And perceive, try to understand or try to get something out of this.
How was the experience? Were we able to really focus and see what it is in the slide or the mind was wavering or we were not able to focus? It is a mental checkpoint. So this is what the purpose of the sixth chakra is. <clears throat> Can you all hear me well? Okay, because I am missing one connector piece for my microphone. So hopefully I will find in the middle of the practice and I will visualize where it is. <laughs> so, <clears throat> okay. You know some basic details about um, sixth chakra is uh, like we have refined our body's um, purification the communication, the purity of uh, the thoughts and speaking in our previous chakra, the fifth chakra, which was Vishuddha chakra. And now we are moving to the Agya chakra. Agya is a Sanskrit word, which means perceive and command. So the small exercise which we did just a few moments before was to perceive from the offered slide, what we are perceiving through whatever is in front of our physical eyes. And then command is, is like to follow the instructions which we are given to a ability to follow the instructions. So that is the literal meaning of agya and the chakra the now come to the location location of this chakra everyone will do this together um index finger and the um thumb will be sitting on the point uh, the highest pointing out point of the chin index on the tip of the nose Mentally perceive this distance and move fingers up. Thumb will go on the tip of the nose and finger will move into the forehead. And then turn the hand upward, put the thumb on the head. So where this tip of the index finger lies, that is the exact location of Agya Chakra deep inside the head. In other way, if we do cross section from front to the back and from ear to ear and from where these front, the horizontal and uh, the line meets in the center, that's where the location of this Agya Chakra is. Interestingly, that is the location of the gland, pineal gland, this hormonal gland, it's called pineal gland. And the area, like we learned that each chakra is not just one point, but it has the effect on around surrounding organs or the area of the body. So the main master glands of master hormonal glands of the body are situated in the central area of the brain, which are the pineal gland, pituitary gland, and the hypothalamus. These are the master centers, master organs, or the hormonal glands, which either uh, secretes directly or indirectly stimulates other glands to work their functions. So we can imagine that if we don't have the energy balanced in this area, how many and what kind of 
physical and mental problems we could have. We can just imagine there are hundreds. So that was the location and the hormonal gland information. And then next we will see that the element, every, every chakra had an element attached with it. This one is a bigger realm. So all five elements are connected with this chakra. So all fire, air, space, earth and water, every, all five are attached with this. So let's see that when we have excessive energy in this chakra, now one can imagine that when the energy is flowing too much in the head, what happens? The, this is uh, one uh, particular thing about this is pineal gland is that is the that regulates that that gland is sensitive to light, external light. So as per the uh, amount of light we receive through our eyes inside the center that pineal glands acts accordingly. So we have heard that the people who live in the Northern hemisphere they, in the winter time when they have very few hours of daylight, they feel depressed, low energy like that. And vice versa with brighter sunny days, sunny environment, the people have more energy. So pineal gland is regulating the light and the, when the, through that the regulation of light, so many processes, more than 100 processes occurring in the body are associated with the light function. So <laughs> when this energy is in excessive, the light is too much, one can hallucinate, they have delusions, false perceptions, they have uh, excessively um, intrusive memories, nightmares, difficulty concentrating, and excessive fantasizing, like light is too much. So the vision, what light does is the vision, the vision is too much and their fantasy is like growing everywhere. When the energy is in deficiency, then it's opposite to this. They have lack of imagination, difficulty visualizing, they have excessive skepticism, acceptance is too low, and uh, they have denial. They can't see because when, when a person does not have a clear vision, they will not believe that what it is. So they have denial in most of the spheres of their actions and thoughts and beliefs. And they, they feel that there is, they have very few alternatives to do their actions or live their life. So this is the deficiency. Now what if when a person has a balanced energy in this area is they have strong intuition. In Raja Yoga meditation, we have learned about having the vision of past, future and present. The Sanskrit terminology for this is the trikal darshi. Three, three means three and kal means times. When a person has a balanced energy in this chakra, they have three visions of past, present, and future. And when a person has vision or knowledge about all these three times, their decisions will be perfect. Their actions and reactions will be very, very moderated, less harming or most elevated uh, persons will have their actions very benevolent. So that is the realm of these six chakra, Agya chakra. They have very good memory, of course, because they have all knowledge of all three, 
all three times. And uh, uh, they have a very, uh, they have a guiding vision for life. Of course, when a person has knowledge of all this past, present, and future, they have a well-supported guidance for the life. They have like a life literature, life scripture, or life manual very well in front of their eyes. Can you imagine if we have the manual for life, how easy it would be to live, right? So when we open the energy in this chakra, we are able to get that. So physical problems, very pertaining to the area like headache, eye problems, and many more brain. When we talk about the brain illnesses, it opens up the whole big chapters. There are many brain illnesses. And there are we um, who have attended the other lecture about the feel-good hormones, we learned about the feel-good hormones, serotonin, dopamine, all of those are secreting in this realm of this energy chakra. And uh, when these are in deficit, our uh, feeling, the mood, uh, the hormones, female hormones, temperature and uh, digestion, everything is affected. So we can imagine that the illness is related to all this will be there if a physical on a physical sphere. So now we will do one more experiment. Today's class will be less of the, we will do yoga uh, asanas, but uh, more of today's class is the experiential class. So be very, very focused and participate in each and every activity. So let's do <coughs> this activity. Uh, we will do the exercise for activation of this chakra first. So <coughs> sit straight, correct the posture wherever you're sitting. Possibly feet must be grounded. We will do this exercise uh, in two different ways. So first we will eat, um, let's do this first. Physically see the flame and then we will ignite our internal flame. So, as we see, everyone could see in their device's screen, there is a flame. Gently and softly keep gazing the flame. If possible, darken the room. If it can happen with minimal efforts at this moment, if you have to do too much, then don't worry about it. Breathe could, could be subtle. If you need to blink eye quickly, feel free to do so, but keep gazing steadily. Point when the eyes start watering, very gently close eyes and try to visualize the same flame 
internally. And when the vision of that flame with mental eye is lost, open the eyes again and gaze to this flame again. So that was a fun exercise we did. Um, that was the action we did of perceiving, as the agya means perceive. Perceiving the whatever it is outside in the outside world, physically, we take it in. This is how it happens, whether we know or not, but everything we see outside goes inside our head and that has effect in us. So, <clears throat> and this was a beautiful example of a candlelight. And we felt a beautiful experience inside. So it clearly means that whatever is not beautiful, whatever is not servicing to us, if we see that, or if we indulge into that kind of things too much, all of those things will go in and that will affect the energy of the Agya Chakra. And that will keep a blindness, a, a, a invisible curtain between us and the reality. So, <clears throat> next exercise we will do is, we will close the left eye Extend the right hand out straight. Um, put the thumb inside the palm and close rest of the fingers. Straight arm, straight elbow. And as the action of the lighter, with the push of a button, the flame comes out. We pull out the thumb in between the, <clears throat> from in between the fingers, as if we are igniting our light. And now we gaze at the thumb, 
and then change our focus to the farthest point possible in this room. Gaze to that farthest point for some time. Maybe 30, 40 seconds. And then slowly pull the gaze, the focus point back to the thumb, back to the th light to be ignited. And change it. And next we change it to the light we ignited. Keep it there. Slowly move that light to the right side. Without turning the head, don't lose the focus. At the point we feel like we have to move the head, stop it right there. Hold it at that farthest point. And then slowly bring it back. Stay there. And very slowly folding elbow, bring that flame close to the eye. As close as possible. Hold it right there. Keep gazing on the flame. And now slowly take the flame away. And straighten the elbow. Release the feast. And very gently <clears throat> socket on the eyes, keep eyes open. Both eyes are open. And now, now we change this exercise to the other side. Extend the left hand out straight. Open the, the eyes are open, right? Eyes are not closed. <clears throat> Put the thumb in first, close all the fingers, make a fist, tight fist, and then ignite the flame. Gaze at this flame. And then change the focus point to the farthest point possible in this room. Change it back to the flame. Change it back to the bar. Back to the flame. Keep gazing on the flame, slowly and steadily. Take the flame to the side without turning head. Just move the eyeballs. Keep gazing at the flame. And when we feel that the head is turning, stop right there, keep gazing. Try to stretch the eyeballs as far as possible to the left.
And now slowly bring the flame back. Keep gazing, move the eyeballs with the flame. Bending the elbow, bring the flame closer to the eye. As close as possible. Steady. And slowly take it away. Release the feast and slowly place the palm on the left eye as well. Perceive with mental eyes. Keeping eyes closed, take both palms away. Make, keep the palms attached and let's circle or rub the palms together. Create the energy between the palms. Slowly and as it's possible, increase the speed of rubbing. Create the heat, warmth and energy. And when we feel significantly warm in the palms, socket both palms again on the eyes, keep eyes open. Keep the fingers attached with each other in the center of the forehead. Slowly release our hands. I would like a few sharing at this point. Whoever can share about the experience they just had. Does anyone want to share? They can unmute and say. Hi, sister. Om Shanti. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I felt like at the last time, last when after rubbing the hands and just putting the eyes, uh, putting the hands over there, it felt like I was seeing some blue light in the center of my forehead and it felt like my third eye is getting opened or something like that. Yeah, so it, it felt really good. Very beautiful. And your experience is exactly what's the purpose of this exercise. Very beautiful. Anyone else? Yavanika, you want to share? You can unmute and say. Yeah, it felt like it's bringing the awareness into the body. I couldn't hear you well. You can speak again. Ravin Bhai? Yeah, it felt like bringing the awareness into the body because, you know, usually we are always looking out, but this brings a, a centeredness, you know. So that was felt very good. You know? Yes. Again, yes, that was a perceiving exercise. Very good. Um, gain out of the exercise and that was the purpose to activate the energy in this chakra um 
uh, Sandhya ji, you want to share? Your yeah, I first time after doing this exercise, I felt bodyless to tell you the truth. First time I've been practicing, but this was my best experience. And I felt like flickering light, not the like focus, but I think I'm getting there. I felt that and that was the best moment. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful sharings and experiences we had. Uh, so this is how we open the energy and the Agya Chakra. And when we have this energy flowing well, we learn that how when the energy is balanced, what are the capacities we have. So <clears throat> moving to our next segment, we will do some, <clears throat> excuse me, or we can just do the physical movements at this point and then we can resume back to the another meditative intuitive practices. So we will shift to yoga mats now. I believe you all are on the yoga mat. So I will go. So I hope, let me know if you can hear me well from this far. Is it okay? Yes. Yes? Okay. Yes, sister. Okay, good. Thank you. So we will come to all four tabletop position. Come to kneeling pose first, resting the palms on the mat, coming directly into straight tabletop position. It has to be a tabletop means tabletop. If if a coffee tray is put on the back, it should not fall. So let's begin our cat and cow movements from here. Inhale, in prepare. Exhale, slowly release each vertebrae. And we arch the back in the cat pose. The head will move last. And inhale and extend each vertebrae. And the head will move up last. Keep flowing. The bottom up towards the head. Each vertebrae separate as if. An invisible finger is running from bottom of the spine up towards the head. That finger is stepping on each vajibri, giving the command to release or stretch. Come to the neutral tabletop position at this point. If we need to separate the knees, feel free to do so. Use any props if it is required. Sit back into child's pose. Bring hips close to heels and slowly sink down. What we want to the goal or in this pose is to touch the forehead to the ground. If it is not available, then we can use the block and rest the forehead or separate the knees. That might also help to go further down.
So and stepping breaths in and out. And pressing into the palms, lift the hips off, bring the knees closer if they were wide apart, tuck the toes, and lift the hips off to the ceiling. We came into the downward facing dog, and we will pedal the heels one at a time, bending other knees. We stretch both heels at the same time. At the same time, we look in between the palms. This is different than other downward facing dogs we do. Usually we keep the uh, neck hang loose. In here, we are pointing the out yeah, chakra, the center of the forehead, keeping it open. We slowly walk all the way to the front. Keeping knees soft, circle sleeve, slowly rise up. Inhale. Raising the head up, looking up onto the ceiling. And on the exhalation, bring hands at heart. So today I will demonstrate some um, poses using the chair. So that it is available to most of us. So putting the chair set on the, putting, putting this chair on the mat for the stability, not on the surface, other surface. So now just rest both palms on the mat. We will do the dolphin pose. Step back with both legs. Gaze onto the seat of the chair. Let us get settled into this pose for two breaths. Deep inhale in. And then slow exhale out. Slowly, as, as it is available, bring, try to bring down the elbows on the chair. So here also we can use the block. If the head cannot go all the way down, put the block on the chair and rest the forehead here. Pressing the sixth chakra energy if it is possible to go further down take forehead all the way down on the seat of the chair go ahead and do that Slowly come back onto the palms. From here, we step forward, left leg, right leg stays back, bringing the hips to the front. 
raising head straight to look straight ahead on the wall. First, we find that straight focal point. And from here, take the gaze slightly upward, not all the way up to the crease of ceiling and wall, but somewhere in the middle. So that our head is slightly tilted up and we are keeping the Agya Chakra energy open and moving. Hold the pose, don't hold the breath, keep breathing. And slowly bring both feet to the front. From here, we can uh, rest both palms on the legs anywhere it is available. Holding from the hip crease, try to gaze to the wall. Keep hands positioned very at a very comfortable spot so that there is no crunch in the neck. Bringing palms again on the chair, we change the legs. This time we take left leg back, right leg in the front. Bring the hips towards the front. First we find that focal point straight ahead. Slowly take the focal point somewhere up. Not all the way up to the crease of wall and ceiling. Radiating the light, illuminate the light from within. And slowly come back, bring both legs to the front and circles, we raise both hands up and exhale, hands at heart. That was beautiful. Thank you for participating. And next we will move to more meditative practices. For activating the chakra. So the mudra for this chakra is index finger and the thumb. Touch the finger pads of these two very lightly and extend the rest of the finger straight ahead. This is the mudra. We can do any breathing, any meditation, sitting straight with the spine straight making this mudra to activate the higher chakras of our chakra system. The breathing we will practice for activation of this chakra is alternate nostril breath. In Sanskrit, it is called Nari Shodhana. So to practice this breath, we will use the right hand we will, the peace fingers, we will gently touch the spot we found in the earlier practice where the Agya Chakra location is. We will put these peace fingers on that chakra spot using the right thumb to close the right nostril 
and using pinky and ring finger to close the left nostril. So now first we will close the right nostril with thumb. Open the left, inhale through the left one. Close both. Exhale through right. Inhale in through right. Exhale through left. So this is one repetition. We will repeat for four more times. And if you are new to this breathing practice, remember we change the nostril when we are about to exhale out. Keeping eyes closed gently, the whole face is relaxed and jaws are relaxed. When we breathe out through left, slowly and gently take those peace fingers away from the forehead. Sit still and be in the experience. At this point, we can make the Dhyan Mudra, Gyan Mudra, lightly touching index and thumb, resting the palms on the thighs. Trying to recap the experience of the whole past hour. Visualize that flame again. This chakra is also called the third eye of wisdom. As our intuition gets stronger and powerful, our mental vision gets clear and clearer. And when we are able to see any situation from growing beyond the situation, looking from the bird's eye view, we have the vision of all perspectives. This vision is more informative Relax the palms 
and trying to grow beyond the physical body. Focus in that third eye area. What is it? Is it the body? Or is it the mind? Or it's something else beyond the mind and body and intellect. With the closed eyes, I can see myself sitting on this chair or the sofa. or whatever physical place the body is resting at this point. And slowly I'm expanding the vision and I can see the whole room around me. That me who is able to see the whole room is now traveling out of the roof of this home and it's going up and up and higher up. From where I can see the whole town. The vision of the town is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Now I am outside of the Earth, the planet Earth. And I have reached into the world of stars, the blue night sky. and twinkling stars. The horizons of my vision have expanded. I'm able to take in the wider vision. I'm able to see and perceive things from many directions. I'm a free-flowing, non-judgmental, unbiased being. And when I have these qualities,
I take my decisions well formed. without any interruptions and overpowering of my attachments, greed, ego, and needs. In this world of nightly open blue sky with the stars, I'm a free flowing being. I have a broader acceptance and open to all kind of alternatives and opportunities. And to end this beautiful practice today, thinking self which I have separated from physical body that is my true identity I'm not limited to the body and the physical vision what is I'm able to see through physical eyes I am beyond that Slowly and slowly, this intuitive self is coming back closer to the body, entering into the earth. Entering into the town I live in, into the home, into the throne, and now this intellectual, intuitive self is free flowing but still residing in a balanced way in the energy center of Alya Chakra. I bring my hands up, my thumbs up to the ears, gently close the ears. Bring my index fingers on the forehead, meet the tip of the index fingers in the center at the location of Agya Chakra. Big fingers on the nose bridge, ring fingers under the nose, pinky fingers under the lips. This way I have blocked all the organs of actions which can affect my broader vision, I'm completely in control of this organs and being a master, I'm inhaling in through the nose and while exhaling, I tend all gently sending the vibrations into the center of the brain where the location of the Agya Chakra is. So gently press the ears and do this breath for three times. Mm.
Very slowly taking the fingers away from the ears and face, resting both palms on the lap. Be in the experience for next few moments. And very gently open eyes, physical eyes. The flame of my third eye is open now. And from now onward, I will see each and everything with three eyes. I will see the past, present, and future. Namaste, Om Shanti.